So I did mention at the end of last week that we're going to do slightly longer this week and have um, an extra reading, probably on Saturday, uh, so that next week we finish uh, these books and we can go on to something new. Um, equally, I've got a little bit of something different, like I said, that I might put up some uh, some pictures uh, for us to help us think through these next um, these next few books. So hopefully you'll enjoy that. Um, but this formula remains the same. We will read some scripture together, have a think about that and end all of our time in prayer. Joel chapter two from the New Century Version. Blow the trumpet in Jerusalem. Shout a warning on my holy mountain. Let all the people who live in the land shake with fear. Because the Lord's day of judging is coming. It is near. It will be a dark, gloomy day, cloudy and black, like the light at sunrise. A great and powerful army will spread over the mountains. There has never been anything like it before and there will never be anything like it again. In the front of them a fire destroys, in the back of them a flame burns. The land in front of them is like the Garden of Eden, the land behind them is like an empty desert. Nothing will escape from them. They look like horses and they run like war horses. It is like the noise of chariots rumbling over the tops of mountains like the noise of a roaring fire burning dry stalks. They are like a powerful army lined up for battle. When they see them, nations shake with fear and everyone's face becomes pale. They charge like soldiers, they climb over the wall like warriors. They all march straight ahead and do not move off their path. They do not run into each other because each walks in line. They break through all efforts to stop them and keep coming. They run into the city, they run at the walls and they climb into the houses, entering through windows like thieves. Before them, earth and sky shake. The sun and the moon become dark and the stars stop shining. The Lord shouts out orders to his army. His army is very large. Those who obey him are very strong. The Lord's day of judging is an overwhelming and terrible day. No one can stand up against it. The Lord says, even now come back to me with all your heart. Fast, cry and be sad. Tearing your clothes is not enough to show you are sad. Let your heart be broken. Come back to the Lord your God because he is kind and shows mercy. He doesn't become angry quickly and he has great love he can change his mind about doing harm who knows maybe he will turn back to you and leave behind a blessing for you grain and drink offerings belong to the lord your god blow the trumpet in jerusalem call for a day when everyone fasts tell everyone to stop work bring the people together and make the meeting holy for the lord Bring together the elders as well as the children and even the babies that still feed at their mother's breasts. The bridegroom should come from his room, the bride from her bedroom. The priests, the Lord's servants, should cry between altar and the entrance to the temple. They should say, Lord, have mercy on your people. Don't let them be put to shame. Don't let other nations make fun of them. Don't let people in other nations ask. Where is their God? Then the Lord became concerned about his land and felt sorry for his people. He said to them, I will send you grain, new wine and olive oil so that you will have plenty. No more will I shame you among the nations. I will force the army from the north to leave your land and go into a dry, empty land. Their soldiers in front will be forced into the Dead Sea and those in the rear into the Mediterranean Sea. Their bodies will rot and stink. The Lord has surely done a wonderful thing. 
Land, don't be afraid. Be happy and full of joy because the Lord has done a wonderful thing. Wild animals, don't be afraid because the open pastures have grown grass. The trees have given fruit. The frig trees and the grapevines have grown much fruit. So be happy, people of Jerusalem. Be joyful in the Lord your God because he does what is right. He has brought you rain. He has sent the fall rain. And the spring rain for you is before. And the threshing floors will be full of grain and the barrels will overflow with new wine and olive oil. Though I sent my great army against you, those swarming locusts and hopping locusts, the destroying locusts and the cutting locusts that ate your crops, I will pay you back for those years of trouble. Then you will have plenty to eat and be full. You will praise the name of the Lord your God, who has done miracles for you. My people will never again be shamed. Then you will know that I am among the people of Israel, that I am the Lord your God, and there is no other God. My people will never be shamed again. After this, I will pour out my spirit on all kinds of people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your old men will dream dreams, and your young men will see visions. At that time, I will pour out my spirit also on male slaves and female slaves. I will show miracles in the sky and on the earth, blood, fire and thick smoke. The sun will become dark, the moon red as blood. Before the overwhelming and terrible, terrible day of the Lord comes. Then anyone who calls on the Lord will be saved because on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there will be people who will be saved, just as the Lord has said. Those left alive after the day of punishment are the people whom the Lord has called. Okay, so I set myself a new challenge um, to be able to put uh, on screen um, some information uh, for us to help us think um, about the minor prophets and where they fit in the overarching uh, story of the Old Testament. Uh, so this is what I've created. There we go. And it is not as accurate as we would love it to be. So it's it's general. It gives us an idea of, uh, of what's uh, going on. Um, and, and the reason that I've done this is because it can be terribly confusing. And by saying it can be terribly confusing, I mean, I find it very confusing. And in fact, this has been a wonderful uh, exercise for me to try and get that a little bit more clarified in my own head. So thank you for the opportunity. But here we can see um, that um, the the minor prophets are all those in uh, blue. Um, and we've got Joel uh, right up at the top. So one of the oldest of the minor prophets. Um, and this is at a time uh, just after Solomon has died. Uh, the reason that Solomon's death is significant is because when Solomon dies, um, the, the kingdom uh, splits in two because they can't have one ruler, they can't decide. So you have the north and south uh, kingdoms. Um, and so we're in that time where um, there's been this big fra fraction um, but there's not we're not yet into exile so that's that's whereabouts uh, we are and uh, you can also see there that we're around about um, the time of the prophet Elijah uh, as well and in the green we've got our sort of big bad guy on the scene so that's Egypt at the moment the the, the threat from outside is what that green is representing and at this moment um, we're facing Egypt. Uh, so yeah, hopefully that gives you a little bit of context about where we are and I'll keep putting that up uh, throughout the next uh, two weeks so that we can just see, visualise and think, oh yeah, maybe I do have some sort of idea where we are and what we're talking about because that can be very confusing.
Joel, though, let's be honest, we all came alive at the right at the very end because um, it's the Acts uh, reading, isn't it? It's uh, Pentecost. My own, you know, we, we recognise that, the, you know, um, young men will dream dreams and, uh, you know, everyone's going to prophesy and our Holy, the Holy Spirit's going to be poured out. Um, so that's coming at this time, at a time um, where they're lamenting David. So Solomon, Solomon has died as well. So the two great kings and everything is going to go downhill from here. Um, and they're looking ahead in that moment, aren't they, to a future. And the way that we see it is they're looking ahead uh, to our future uh, when the Holy Spirit's poured out because of what Jesus has done. And, you know, obviously that's not what they were had in mind at the moment of, of writing. But isn't it fascinating, exciting that we are part of a story that happened now is like 3,000 years ago, this prophecy. And, and when we talk about the Holy Spirit and we talk about Pentecost, we are aligning ourselves with this story in this moment. I, for one, think that's um, mind-blowing. Um, but what do you think? Maybe you don't think we're part of it. Maybe you think it's something different. I would love uh, to hear your thoughts, as always. Let's have a word of prayer. God of us all, eternal and always present, always with us. We remember that you created each one of us, not just in this moment in history, but in every moment you have created us all and you know us intimately. You have long been reaching out to us. And you know this great story. This great story that we're trying to grapple with and we're trying to find our place within. We give thanks, God, that nobody is beneath your notice. That we are so precious to you and have been brought into this story. So as we think ahead uh, to Pentecost, to marking that great outpouring of your Holy Spirit. When we we believe that this prophecy is finally coming to fruition, we give thanks uh, for the blessing of being in this time and in this place. The blessing of having the Holy Spirit with us. We pray. Uh, that we might honour our place in this wonderful story as you continue to reveal exactly what that means uh, for each of us in our lives at this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.